Welcome to another video, and today we're taking a look at an HP Z230 Workstation Small Form Factor PC. So we'll be taking a look at what it's like to repurpose an older Workstation PC like this for use in 2025. I'm kind of excited to get started on this. I think that it has a lot of potential still. So let's take a look at the upgrades. First up, you'll notice that there's an Intel Core i7 sticker on the PC case. I already booted this thing to BIOS to check and it has a i7-4790 CPU already installed. So that's a big bonus that used to be a pretty heavy hitter back in the day. Here on the spec sheet for this PC and what makes it kind of interesting is that it does support a range of Xeon CPUs, which brings about the chance to use ECC memory. And I do have 32 gigabytes of ECC memory installed on this motherboard over here. But the 4790, to my knowledge, and on this motherboard does not support ECC memory. But the CPU has the same amount of cache as the top Xeon option, and only a slightly, slightly slower clock speed. So perhaps the difference could be negligible, but it really depends on what you want to use this PC for. And first up is the RAM. In particular, we have 32 gigabytes of Timetech branded DDR3L 1600 megahertz. That should be plenty for what we're looking to do with this PC. And for storage, we have a Team Group t Force Vulcan Z 512 gigabyte 2.5 inch solid state drive. And for the graphics card, I purchased a MSI OC Edition low profile RTX 3050 that has six gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. I actually really like the design of the card with these nice little carbon fiber accents. Otherwise, the card reminds me a lot of GTX 1650 low profiles with the larger heatsink and two little fans, and also taking up two slots. And this OC version of the card has a little boost in clock speeds. Let's get this thing opened up and get those upgrades in. I moved over to a little stand here so we can get more of a top-down view. A neat little feature here that I really appreciate, on the inside of the side panel we have all the information about the motherboard. So first up, I'd like to take the CPU cooler off so we can get some new thermal paste on and also clean up the fan. And you notice that the fasteners holding down the heatsink are a Torx bit, so make sure that you have one of those. That thermal paste has certainly dried up. And there's our 4790 in all its glory. Got the heat sink all cleaned up. Just using some tissue paper and isopropyl alcohol. Before we get this thing back on with new thermal paste, I'm just going to clean it up with some Q-tips and a little bit of water. Uh, specific specifically, just getting inside the fan blade here and giving it a good clean. I've already blown the whole system out with a air blower. So there should be no extra dust. Definitely got some dust off those fan blades. Before we move on, I just wanted to point out that this is kind of an interesting ventilation system. We have this shroud here to direct hot air outside of the case as an exhaust. And I'm somewhat confident in this heatsink. At least it has two copper pipes that go through the fins. So I'm hoping that this thing will be able to keep up with some gaming because that fan is pretty tiny. And this extra piece on the front maybe helps direct some airflow, but it also looks like a solution for cable management with these included clips. Let's get the RAM installed now. I think it'll be easy to lift up this assembly, but first I think we need to take off the front panel. That's kind of nice that this whole assembly just kind of lifts right up for service. We got a hard drive caddy up here. Here's room for an expansion bay up here for like a card reader. And it looks like we have a spot right here for an extra SSD or hard drive. It's kind of interesting. There's four screws here that I can actually put in the SSD and it looks like it'll slide right into the slot here. So let's do that. Keep in mind, you'll need that Torx bit again. And there's a little release here in case we need to take it out. With this assembly up, we get a better look at the cable management that HP offers in this PC. And there's some extra hard drive screws over here too. We have the little latches that we have for cable management are pretty handy and it looks pretty neat and tidy in here. And also what's kind of exciting, that's a USB 3.0 header. So we can definitely get some extra ports in that expansion bay. Shout out to HP. And I'm looking at you Lenovo with your proprietary USB 3 headers. 
So the power supply does have a four pin CPU connector, but over here we can see there's a six pin header over here for power to the motherboard. And then things like hard drives and this optical driver powered through the motherboard too. This is a 240 watt power supply, so I'm not too worried about powering the 3050, but during the gaming, we'll see what the power output really is for the card and the CPU. Speaking of the 3050, let's get this thing installed. One thing to note in case you weren't aware, this is a PCIe 3.0, lane so it offers PCIe 3.0 speeds this does support PCIe 4.0 but I mean for a budget upgrade I'm okay with it and I think the difference would be negligible for a little card like this that's looking pretty good so far I didn't mention this before but this 3050 doesn't require a PCIe connector and that's why I chose it for this PC I got a pretty good deal at about $200 Canadian off Amazon after using some discount codes. And this whole PC with the 4790 was actually donated to me. So shout out to that guy. That's what keeps this cost down as I'm paying mainly for the SSD, the RAM, and the graphics card. And I guess my time. The HP came with these flat metal brackets for the PCIe lane covers over here. Fortunately, I have some from a Lenovo small form factor with a honeycomb grill, so hopefully that provides some passive air cooling for the GPU. So we could fit an extra hard drive up here, but I'll leave that for the customer. If they want to install one, we'll talk about it. I'm just going to keep with the 512 gig SSD, which can also be upgraded. But it is good to know that we do have some expansion options with this PC. Wow, that's looking pretty clean. I'm really liking how this looks like a neat and tidy little package. One thing I'm slightly worried about is once we put on the side panel, we're kind of suffocating that graphics card a little bit. But you know what? The TDP and the power draw for low profile cards is pretty low. So the best thing that we can do is test it out and get some real world results before making a judgment. And the PC is all put together. Before we do some tests, I'll just go over what the motherboard and I.O. options are. Of course, we have that optical drive that we already talked about. And right here is where that expansion bay could go if you had a card reader or extra USB ports or whatever. I even thought about taking out the optical drive and installing a couple of these 60mm Noctua fans for air intake. And I am kind of curious if that will have a difference at all. And I am willing to test it out, but I kind of want to get this PC done sooner than later. Luckily, I have a second one over here that I can do those tests on. So on the front panel here, just below the power button, there's two times USB 2.0 and two times USB 3.0 and one headphone jack and one combo headphone and microphone jack. The RTX 3050 has one times DisplayPort 1.4a and two times HDMI 2.1. On the motherboard, we have these two audio jacks, two times USB 3.0, two times USB 2.0. There's a serial port. And we have three display ports here, so we could run multiple monitor setups with this PC. A Gigabyte RJ45 Ethernet port, two more USB 2.0, and mouse and keyboard PS2 ports. There's a Windows 8 Pro sticker. I also didn't mention we're going to install Windows 11 onto this PC and we're going to see how it runs and if we run into any issues at all. So we can report back in case you want to do the same thing. As I mentioned before, we just have this little grill here for passive air intake, a solid metal side panel. We do have the power supply fan for air exhaust and the grill down here from the CPU fan for air exhaust as well. Here's the two honeycomb brackets that I installed as well. So Windows 11 Pro is up and running on the PC and I've downloaded everything I need to test it out right now. We're just waiting for The Last of Us Part 1 to finish building all the shaders. This is actually a pretty good little test run for the hardware. You can see that we're really stressing out that old i7. And the 3050 as well, the temps are getting a little high, but definitely not unmanageable. I think they will get a little bit lower once the game is all loaded up. But the main thing is, is that Windows 11 Pro is seemingly running just fine. Once this game is done loading, I think we'll load up DaVinci Resolve and Handbrake and do some test runs. So DaVinci Resolve 19 is loaded up with my usual 11 minutes of raw 1080p footage. And we're testing a render mostly utilizing the CPU. Let's see how long this one takes. And that took 6 minutes and 49 seconds. 
So in comparison, that's about double the time from the weakest Ryzen CPU that I've tested so far. And the only other four core eight thread CPUs I've tested are from laptops. And the best one to compare with is the ThinkPad P51 because it has the dedicated GPU. And even in that case, it was about 35 seconds faster. Still, I mean, if you're planning to use this CPU in 2025, you gotta manage your expectations. And if that time's okay with you, then awesome. Now we got Handbrake to test out, and it's the usual 11 minutes of 1080p gaming footage with the Creator 1080p preset. And we're testing raw CPU power here. Let's see how well this one goes. Seven minutes and 27 seconds. With the exception of the ThinkPad and the integrated graphics on that CPU, that's definitely the slowest time we've recorded so far. But again, manage expectations for an older CPU. I'm far more curious to see what the GPU has to offer here. Let's go. One minute and 25 seconds. So it looks like that time is most comparable to the instance where I had an RX 6600 on a slower motherboard that only sports PCIe 3.0. Maybe that's why it took that long. And with that Radeon 7 GPU, which was actually a little bit slow. So yeah, the 3050 actually didn't do too bad here. I'm actually pretty impressed with that little thing. And it's time now to test out the gaming performance. Let's segue to that and then I'll come back with a little overview of the video. So I've got The Last of Us Part 1 running and the temperatures are still pretty high. We're playing in 1080p. Like I mentioned before, the graphics card and the CPU are a little bit suffocated in a case like this. So let's take the side panel right off and see if the temperatures shift uh, dramatically or just a little bit. All right, that graphics card is working pretty hard. You can hear those fans spinning. Let's give this thing a little bit of room to breathe and see what kind of temps we get. So the temperatures for the RTX 3050 really dropped, but the temps for the CPU are still pretty high. And you know what, that's just the kind of results you're going to get. We're really stretching out the lifespan of this CPU, but hey, it works. Let's get back to the test. Maybe I'll keep the side panel off for the rest. We're just going to test out a lighter game like Fortnite and see what kind of performance we can get.
so here's some things we know after testing out the gameplay. This 240 watt power supply is enough for the system. We rarely went over 100 watts between the CPU and GPU alone. This little CPU cooler, despite its little copper heat pipes, it gets pretty warm. But again, to be fair, we're really stressing out the 4th Gen i7 here in 2025. This RTX 3050 performs pretty well. I'm actually fairly impressed with it. We can play some modern titles, and although it takes some adjustments in the settings and resolution for each game, totally playable and it's on a budget. It'd be kind of fun to modify these side panels so there'd be more ventilation and put in like a dust filter. Otherwise temporarily you could just keep the side panel off but that does bring in a lot of problems with dust collection. Hopefully this video helped you figure out if repurposing an old HP Z230 workstation small form factor PC is worth it in 2025. For me personally I had a lot of fun putting it together and filming this video and testing it out. If you're somebody like me you'll probably enjoy it too. And honestly, I could see myself using it. Either way, it is testament to keeping old hardware alive in 2025. So thanks a lot for checking out my video. Definitely leave a comment if you're using something similar to this. I'd love to hear about it. Other than that, I hope you have a great day.